The purpose of this third homework review video is to support you in your efforts to find the answers to your study guide and to check what you have searched and found from the notes you have taken over the course of the past few weeks over Native Americans for this unit. Follow along with your study guide and verify that your answers match the ones provided in purple throughout the slides. Remember, you must bring your completed study guide to class the day of your test in order to be given the opportunity to take your test. It is your test ticket. So let's go ahead and get started. You needed to write the definition for each of the vocabulary words. A primary source tells you about an event and is from the time of that event. Examples include pri primary sources like speeches, photographs, and letters. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address is shown up top. You see a photograph of Martin Luther King Jr. giving a speech and a letter that was actually written by George Washington. Two, secondary sources tell you about an event, but they are from the time after the event. The keyword is after. You can even underline the word after in your definition. Secondary sources usually talk about a primary source, but they're not a primary source themselves. Examples of secondary sources are textbooks, magazines, and encyclopedias. They also include documentary movies, DVD collections, and shows. Number three, a settlement is a place inhabited or lived in by people, an established community. You see the Native American settlements and the English settlements. Keep in mind that a settlement is a place. It's somewhere that you can be, somewhere that you can live. It's a community. Number four is Pueblo. An American Indian settlement of the southwestern U.S., especially one consisting of multi-storied houses. You can see that Pueblo has many different meanings. Pueblo can mean the adobe, multi-storied apartment houses. Pueblo can mean an actual tribe or group of people. And Pueblo can also mean the um, groups of Pueblo tribes that lived in the southwestern part of the United States. Fun tidbit from Pinterest is that you can make Pueblo houses with graham crackers and icing, so check it out. Number five is the word disperse. It's an action word and it means to distribute or spread over a wide area. You can see the crop dusting airplane flying over this field and dispersing pesticides over this area. The pesticide is being dispersed. In the same way, people were dispersed all over North America. If we follow the land bridge theory, up in the top right corner, you can see the people migrated from Asia over the Bering Strait and into North America. The red arrow splits into two and three, showing that people dispersed or spread out all over North America. And over thousands of years, these nomadic groups spread across North, Central, and South America. You can see where some of them settled in the map. Interior. Interior means within or inside, relating to the inside or inner. You can see the interior of a house, an interior of an igloo, and the interior of a longhouse. Here's the interior of a teepee. Inhabit. Inhabit means of a person, animal, or group to live in or occupy a place or environment. The kangaroo inhabits the red portion of Australia. The penguins inhabit Antarctica. The fish in the bottom picture inhabit the aquarium. It's an action word and it means to actually live in or occupy a place. In the same way, people groups inhabit locations. The Inuit people inhabited the Arctic region of North America. The Kwakiato people inhabited the northwest of North America. The Pueblo people inhabited the basin and range region of North America. The Lakota Sioux people inhabited the Great Plains. And the Iroquois inhabited the northeast. You should have given an example of each. So let's go ahead and look at those. Number one, human resources. The people that do the job or make the product or build the technology that makes the product. 
You can see the woman cooking over the fire. She is a human resource. The doctor in the picture is also a human resource who actually does the job. Policeman is a human resource. A teacher is a human resource. A clock or watchmaker is also a human resource. The Indian in this picture is hunting. He is a human resource. This construction worker is a human resource. Number two, natural resources. Natural resources are materials that are found in nature, such as minerals, forests, water, and formable land. You can see the corn is a natural resource, and that would have been harvested by Native Americans the, to eat. The forest is a natural resource, and those trees would have been used to create shelter. And the snow is a natural resource, which could be packed together to make an igloo. A buffalo is a natural resource to make a teepee out of its hide. A deer is a natural resource. It can be used for deer skin clothing. So these are all natural resources turned into a product that was used by man. Number three is a capital resource. It's a good produced and used to make other goods and services. Think of a tractor or tools. In the picture of the Native American, his bow and arrow is a capital resource. The canoe is a capital resource. Other important information. Number one, how did the Native Americans arrive in America? What's the main theory? The first people may have come to North America by crossing the Bering Strait over a land bridge from Asia, following their food. You can see in both of these pictures, the arrows are coming from Siberia or coming from um, the Russian area and crossing a land bridge. Here's kind of another picture that zooms in on this area. During the last ice age, when the glaciers were growing, the oceans covered less land and became shallow. When this happened, the Beringia land bridge became dry. The ancient Native Americans were able to migrate from Asia and Alaska into Alaska. Number two, why do archaeologists spend so much of their time collecting artifacts and not books in order to learn about ancient cultures and civilizations? Well, few of ancient cultures had written languages. They had, um, they would pass their language down through um, speaking and talking. Some of them did have written symbols, and you can see those on the cave walls here, but very few of them wrote wrote with words and letters. So we have very little knowledge of what their life was like without the artifacts to tell us the story. Number three, what is the name of the early Native American settlement discovered in Virginia and which city is located near? Cactus Hill near Richmond, Virginia is that Native American settlement and it's very old, very ancient. You can see that um, they are working at the site in 1999. You can see the site being further excavated and some of the artifacts that were found. And you can also see Cactus Hill in this picture, kind of coming from um, some of those really early civilizations in North America. Number four, why do Native American tribes have to use different resources and materials? Sorry about the mistake in the wording on the study guide. Because they lived in different environments that not only offered certain natural resources to stuff out of. So think about um, it on the Great Plains. You're not going to see many trees. So it'll be very challenging if all Native Americans lived in longhouses because the Lakota Sioux could not. They would have used the buffalo. In the Pueblo villages, Buffalo did not roam in the Great Basin and Range, so they had to use resources that were different than the Lakota Sioux Indians, and what they did have land and stone that they could turn into a thick clay and brick to make their homes. You can see the Kwakiato lived in forests, and so trees were very important. They also lived near the sea, so they were able to eat salmon, 
whereas the Lakota Sioux could not eat salmon. They were not near the sea or near a lot of river sources that would provide that type of fish. What two tribes are considered nomadic? The Lakota Sioux and the Inuit. Think about both of their dwelling places. The Lakota Sioux had the teepee, which could easily be folded down and transported on a move. In the same way, the Inuit Indians lived in igloos, and those we watched in the video can be made in almost 45 minutes. So again, using the natural resources around them, these nomad peoples were still able to survive while they followed their food sources. Now let's go to the map. The map shows the areas in North America inhabited by various American Indian groups. Match the number with the correct group. Number one, Iroquois. Number two, Pueblo. Number three, Inuit. Number four, Kwakiato. Number five, Lakota. Now let's look at the tribe chart. You'll need to fill in each of the sections. Here we go. Tribe one, the Inuit Indians. The region they came from was the Canadian Shield. The climate was cold, ice, and dark in the winter. The food sources were seal, polar bear, fish, whale, walrus, fox, hare, caribou, and birds. You can see in this picture some Inuit Indians. Their clothing would have been furs and tree bark. Their shelters would be igloos and pit houses, wooden poles with seal or whale skin. You can see a family near their shelter there. And other facts, smelly whale oil was used for lighting. And here you can see Inuit Indians harvesting the oil from a very large whale. Here's some whale skins being used for a shelter and an igloo. Again, this group of Indians would have been from the Arctic region or the Canadian Shield. Now let's talk about tribe two, the Kwakiutl. The region that they are from is the coastal range. The climate is rainy, mild, and they had lots of forests. Their clothing were furs and tree bark and woven clothing. Their shelters were long houses and houses that were made out of wood with peaked roofs, wood from trees in the area. And other facts, this is the tribe you should remember that had the totem poles and they showed their family lineage in these totem poles as well as potlatches, which are much like potluck dinners and celebrations. You can see a potlatch going on in this picture. You can see the Kwakiutl tribe and their very decorated boat, spear fishing. Here's a Kwakiutl image, a painting of a whale. Here's one of their homes. Another one, brightly colored faces on many of their homes. And another potlatch. Tribe three, the Pueblo. The Pueblo is from the, they are from the basin and range region. Their climate is hot and a desert. Their food source was farming, corn, beans, squash, pumpkins, desert animals, and they would have needed to irrigate in order to keep their plants from drying up because of the desert conditions. Clothing, they grew wild cotton into clothing. Their shelter were adobe houses made from sandstone and clay mixed into mud to form bricks. And other facts, they had the first apartment homes. You can see side by side and on top of each other. They're famous for their basket weaving and their blanket weaving.
for. Tribe four, the Lakota Sioux. The region that they would have lived in is the Great Plains. The climate there were hot summers and cold winters. Their food sources were buffalo, corn, squash, grains, beans, and tobacco. Clothing included um, clothes from buffalo and animal skins. And the Lakota Sioux are famous for their headdresses. You can see that in the bottom right corner. The shelters that they would have lived in were teepees with wooden poles wrapped in buffalo skin. These were portable and easy to transport, transport from place to place. And other facts, they used a buffalo for almost everything. You can see some of the designs on the teepees, the horses there. You can see um, a warrior hunting a buffalo, main food source. Sometimes they would run buffalo over cliffs in a seed. And here you can see the cold winters, but still they're needing to hunt. And here are the multiple ways they use the buffalo. The final tribe is the Iroquois tribe, the region that they lived in were the Appalachian Mountains. The climate was cold winters and warm summers. Their food source was hunting deer, farming corn, gathering, fishing, and clothing included animal skins, feathers, woven plants, shelters were primarily longhouses, wood from trees, wigwams that were somewhat portable, and other facts, animal masks made of leather, bark, copper, wood, corn husks, and decorated their hair with feathers were very important and used for ceremonies. The Iroquois had some of the first contact with Englishmen, and you can see that in these pictures. A few study strategies. You can go back over and highlight the keywords from the notes we wrote down. You can use the study guide PowerPoint without me talking in it that I have posted on my website to teach each slide to an imaginary class. You can make flashcards and write the name of a tribe on one side and some of the key notes about the tribe on the line side of the flashcard and then quiz yourself or have a parent or friend quiz you. And finally, you can also make up a song or a rap for the other information section of your study guide. I hope this helps.